Database provider MongoDB reported earnings after the market closed today, and the market is not happy with what it saw. So does this mean that this is a broken company, or is it just a temporarily broken stock? I think the answer will be pretty clear by the end of these 10 minutes, so let's go over it. My name is Brian Stoffel, and as of this time of this recording, I do own shares of MongoDB. So this was the company's fiscal fourth quarter that ended in January. And after the drop, it'll be about a $14 billion company. On the top line, revenue grew 36%. That was well ahead of what Wall Street and management were expecting. Some of that was from a one-time benefit that the company experienced, but still, that's good news. Earnings per share really blew past estimates. This is on a non-GAAP basis, so it does not include stock-based compensation, but $0.57 cents per share was way ahead of what Wall Street and management were expecting. More on that in a second. If you look at non-GAAP, again, not including stock-based compensation margins, there was a whole lot to love here. Some of this was helped out by one-time things, but gross margin expanded markedly, over 400 basis points to over 80%. Operating margins more than doubled. Net margins about quadrupled. That is impressive across the board. Free cash flow increased marginally, not a ton. Net income increased significantly. The balance sheet is still in pretty good shape with a net cash position of about $700 million. Now, overall, the key product is MongoDB Atlas. That is the database that is consumption, again, consumption-based revenue. It was up 50% year over year. It is now 65% of total revenue. Again, that's consumption-based. That'll be important, as you'll see in a minute. Now, the company increased their total customer count by 24%. That's good growth. It's important to note that newer customers tend to add less revenue. It takes time for them to ramp up. Direct sales customers were up 45%. Customers that are using MongoDB Atlas was up 25%. And as you can see, it's basically all of the total customers are using this. And the number of customers paying over $100,000 per year was up 26%. It's also worth noting net annual recurring revenue. Its expansion rate was above 120%. What that means is MongoDB is holding on to all of its customers, but not only holding on to them, but getting them to spend 20% more year over year. The number of $1 million customers was up 30% to 213. Now, back to that stock-based compensation, the reason it's non-GAAP results, it is sizable. $102 million in the quarter was much more about 35% more than the same time last year, and it accounted for about a quarter of all revenue. At the same time, dilution, this is not nothing, but it's also not it, totally out of this world, was 3.8%. You got to remember that the company is executing on its vision, and this is how they're paying their employees. Now, the company did say that it would be slowing its headcount growth. Management talked about this quite a bit. It's one of the reasons that, as you'll see on the bottom line, um, non-GAAP profitability is expected to show up much quicker than expected. So that is one thing that management wanted us to know. For the current quarter, this is why the stock is down. Revenue guide is just for 21% growth year over year. Management, uh, Wall Street was expecting 25% growth and was probably hoping for even better than that. On the bottom line, expectations are better than expected. Earnings per share on a non-GAAP basis, around 18, 19 cents per share. That's ahead of Wall Street's estimates. And for the full year, again, this is where the disappointing is. Management's calling for 16% growth. That is a very fast slowdown from where we were just two years ago versus Wall Street's expectation of 23% growth. As you'll see, however, non-GAAP earnings per share is way, way, way ahead of Wall Street's expectations. I want to take a second to talk about this. So MongoDB's Atlas is 65% of revenue. MongoDB Atlas is consumption-based. So in other words, if customers are using more of it, then MongoDB collects more. If they're using less of it, it collects less. If you are a Snowflake shareholder, you are very familiar with this dynamic. Now, one of the things is, is that when you are consumption-based, when a mega trend is happening and people are ready and willing to spend on it, it means that you can grow way faster than simply subscription-based revenue. Both of those are great forms of revenue. And when times are good, it's really good. However, when you have to hit the brakes, and look, the economy is booming in a ton of sectors, but 
tech is not one of them. That's because tech overhired during COVID and is now pulling back. And because of that, that is affecting the amount that they are using MongoDB's Atlas product. And so that is causing a much faster slowdown than expected. The question for long-term shareholders to ask themselves are twofold. One, do you believe that needing non-SQL databases is going to be much less or much more important 10 years from now? To me, that's an obvious yes. And the second question is, does the company have a moat? And I believe that they do. They, they are far and away the leader in NoSQL. And they also, once, once this starts to be used and downloaded Atlas, the switching costs are sky high. So I absolutely am not worried about this. I understand why there's a slowdown because interest rates are rising because the tech sector overhired and that's what happens. But do I think that's going to be a problem in 2030? No, personally, I don't. So moving forward, I'm going to keep an eye on total customers. Remember those newer customers don't add as much. Number two, Atlas revenue. Number three, operating margins, especially with them slowing down their hiring. And number four, free cash flow. And this company is about to become free cash flow positive. I think the moat is definitely stable and widening. And I think the thesis is very much on track. The problems here are macro in nature. When Brian Frody last ran this through his quality score, it got a 76. On mine, and it's 11. That's awfully close to the anti-fragile territory. But that means that we don't have a whole lot uh, because of where the company is in its growth cycle. We don't have a whole lot to figure out its valuation. Now, speaking of valuation, because this is going to be important in a minute, Brian Feroldi and I are excited to announce that next week we are opening our first ever valuation course, Valuation Explained Simply. If you click on the link in the show notes below and use the code LASTCHANCE200, you can get $200 off of this four-week live cohort-based course. Important to note that expires on the 13th of March. If you come days one and eight, we'll go over some basic things, but in between, we'll show you six different ways to value a company. And again, it's every Tuesday and Thursday. We'll also hold office hours so people can come and ask us questions. But back to MongoDB, the question we need to ask ourselves is where in the growth cycle is it? And I believe it's somewhere between phase two and phase three. We are just about, maybe not gap profits, but we are just about at free cash flow break even. And so because of that, we're seeing this, this improve somewhat, but we don't have a whole lot of metrics to go on. And that does present a problem. Overall, MongoDB is trading for after today about 11 times sales and it is its gross profit has hit a, almost a billion dollars. So it's trading for about 14, 15 times gross profit. However, we don't have much else to go on, and that can be a problem. Um, if we look at free cash flow, we don't really have any to go on. So what I think is interesting to think about is what is the free cash flow margin here? And Jamin Ball on Twitter is a great follow. Go out and follow him right now if you like investing in SaaS companies. And he prints what the top 10 companies are, are, are doing. And what he showed here is the free cash flow margin at these companies. Now, some of them are quite large losses like Samsara, negative 31%, but some of them are quite positive. CrowdStrike, I know they just reported it bumped up to 33%, Viva 37%. And you can see here that the median among these top 10 is 19%. Now, let's uh, just play an imaginary game. This is just imaginary to give an idea here. Let's say that MongoDB had about a 19, 20% free cash flow margin. If they did, and that's a big if, so understand that. But if they did, and we did a reverse discounted cash flow model, gave it an 11% discount rate, 3% terminal growth rate, then the implied growth rate that the company would have to achieve would about 23, 24% free cash flow growth per year. Is that reasonable? Again, this is with the price being where it's going to after hours. I think that's definitely a high bar to jump over. There's no doubt about that. But is it reasonable unreasonable i don't think it's unreasonable i think they'll have to continue performing well but it seems like they could do that now that's looking at the company's free cash flow power and then just applying a reverse discounted cash flow model to it that 
mm, it's a little bit of false precision, I'll be honest. And I think that you should take it with a grain of salt, but it is just a mental model that you can use. The more important thing here is that this remains a company that very clearly, in my opinion, has a moat around it, is mission driven, is founder led, does have insiders with lots of skin in the game, has financial fortitude about to become free cash flow positive. So no, I don't think that this is a broken company. I do think that the stock is suffering because it's a consumption based model and a lot of its customers are pulling back for now on their spending. So. I think it's pretty clear where I stand on the stock, but let me know what you think in the notes below. Give a thumbs up if you appreciate this. Uh, it helps us get discovered. We'll check back in with this one in 90 days. Until then, Brian out.